Hi guys, this is EBP Man, and today we're going to go over a series of tips and tricks that are going to allow you to maximize the use of your Samsung Note 7. Now I'm going to start with um, some new features. Um, in some cases they may be considered advanced features, but they're going to be all the new cool things that you could do, um, and also some of the things that maybe have been around for some time but are really important and things that you could do to take advantage of the Note 7. Now. Uh, I am also going to cover some basic Android things, and I'm going to leave that towards the end. So those of you who are interested in all the new stuff, um, you'll just watch the first half of the video, and then those of you who want everything about um, using the Android um, ecosystem and then using this specific version of it, uh, just watch the entire video. So let's go to it, and let's start looking at all the things you can do with the Note 7. So now this first tip is all about how do you keep your... Note 7 running as fast as possible and in tip-top shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to swipe down once, we're going to go into settings, and then we're going to go into device maintenance. And what I want to show you is uh, this device maintenance section. This is new for um, this version of the Note 7. Uh, we've seen this in probably some of the international versions. We've seen it maybe available in um, some versions uh, that have another version of Android on it, like a stock version. But now uh, you have it here. Most of us may have installed a program called Clean Master that allows you to keep your phone up to date when it comes to cleaning out extra files and cleaning up space. You don't have to do that anymore now with the device maintenance because device maintenance, as you can see here at the very bottom, is going to look at your battery life. It's going to look at your storage. Just going to look at the memory and also look at security. And in the event that your phone needs to be optimized because you're running slow, all you have to do is open this up. And if there was something here telling you that it was not optimized or it's running slow, you push the button and it optimizes the processing um, of the phone. But let's look at battery for a sample. So looking at the battery, it's telling me, based on the amount of battery uh, that I have left, how long will the battery last? Now, what you could do is you can actually customize things. Uh, and we're going to look at some customizations in a second. But I want to show you, if you ever run into a situation where your phone just is heating up and you really don't know, hey, what's, what's causing it? Uh, what you could look at is what's going on with these apps. And it's going to tell you which apps are consuming the most power. More importantly, what it's also going to do is tell you which apps in the background are taking up a lot of power. And what you could do is put them to sleep. Notice what it says here, tap Save Power. Uh, to put the selected apps using your battery to sleep. So what you could do is check some off and then what the, it will do is it will keep those um, in sleep mode when they're not being used. Now what that means is the next time you go into the app, let's say for example it's your email app, it's going to update in real time. But that's not a bad thing especially if you're trying to save some power. Now the other thing you can do and it's in this area here, if you notice this area here, you can actually uh, enhance the power uh, or the longevity of your battery by modifying and enabling the um, power settings. So before there was a power savings mode that was really generic, but here you can personalize and customize your power sa savings mode. So I can turn it on and I can um, choose medium power. Notice what it's going to do. It's going to control the amount of brightness I can set up. It's going to change the system resolution so the way the screen, the, the crispness, the colorful um, part of the screen would be uh, modified in order to give you better battery. And you'll notice once you choose it, there are um, several types that you can um, that you can change. You also have um, you can limit the device performance, which means that it's not going to perform as fast. You can prevent back ground network usage. So that means um, as the phone is uh, is on in your pocket, you're not using it, things are going on, or even as you're doing something, something in the background, you can uh, change that. You can also go in here into Max, and in Max, it's going to be a little bit more aggressive, and you can see that it's changing now from uh, from the high definition uh, or super definition that the screen is in, into HD. It's also going to limit the performance and it's also good thing to make the, that um, instead of 80, um, 90 percent as we saw earlier, it would, becomes 80. Now if you choose customize in any of these, you can see a lot of things that are happening here. You can change the limit of the brightness. You can change the resolution again going from uh, WQHD which is the highest quality over to FHD or to H, uh, HD to create something custom. You could also limit the device performance, turn that on, and you can perform those um, 
that background uh, restriction. So you can personalize it, but notice as soon as you make these changes, notice how the battery life increases dramatically. So this is great if you're going on a long trip or you know that you're not going to be connected for a while and you just want to really milk out the most you can out of the battery by just modifying these settings. So this is a great option to have, especially if you want to make those adjustments. Now on the storage side, this is another cool area. Uh, with the storage, again, uh, you may have installed CleanMaster to get rid of residual files. When you're browsing the internet, what ends up happening is you start accumulating uh, files, all those graphics that come through. And what you can do is you can just clean them out. And it's going to tell you, you could go into specific applications and clean things, or what you can just say, get rid of all this miscellaneous stuff that's there that is basically downloaded every time I use the phone because I want to clean up my phone. All you do is hit clean now, and and it's going to go through and it's going to just clean up your phone. And again, you used to have to install a third party app to do this, uh, and now it's included. And you'll notice that it says Clean Master in there because it's using that kind of technology. So now you have maximized um, the, the amount of space that you have based on getting rid of unnecessary files. Now, the next piece is RAM. And with RAM, what you can do is just go into it and it's going to look at, you know, is there an opportunity to clean up some back-end processes that are going on, applications that are slowing things down. You can click here to see all those applications and what is it going to address, things that are on. And if I say clean now, it's just basically going to gracefully get rid of those applications that are in the background using up all my memory. And um, notice how it frees up 712 uh, megabytes of processing memory so that I could use that in my phone. Phone. So that's the RAM section. Now the last area is going to be device security and this is where you'll be able to go into secure folders. We're going to look at secure folders as part of a separate tip so we'll skip that but again you have a lot of flexibility and again the ability to really tailor your experience by using device maintenance. Now here's another tip when it comes to being able to have the best performing phone. We're going to go into accounts, and in accounts, we're going to just choose backup and reset. Now, we're not going to reset the phone, and we're not going to erase the phone, but there's a neat little feature here that's called auto restart, and I have mine selected. And what auto restart does is it restarts your phone um, once a week, um, or um, it allows you to customize your timing. So, for example, here you'll notice that I have um, auto restart on. And what it's going to do is, it's going, as long as your phone is uh, plugged in and has um, power, it's going to automatically restart your phone. And in my case, I said I wanted to do it at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I wanted it to happen on Monday. Now, I can choose every Tuesday. I can choose every Friday. I can't choose more than one day, but I can make um, that change. Now, what's going to happen is... is on Monday at 3 a.m. my phone is going to restart and by restarting it's going to refresh the phone. You have to realize your phone is a computer and you know that your computer after a while of it running and processing it needs to be restarted. So this is going to allow you to do that restart automatically without you having to press and hold a power button and reset your phone. It's going to do it for you and it's going to keep your phone fresh. I know a lot of people who do this manually but now you have the benefit of doing it automatically. Now another option is to um, really change the way your screen looks. Um, with Samsung's latest release of their UI, they have kind of have like a halo going around each one of the icons, like a, an extra ring around them. And if you notice mine, they're just full color. There's no white background in each one. So what I did uh, to just get that, because I, I really didn't like it, is I went into settings, I went into display, and I looked at icon frames. And you notice how I said icons only right so it doesn't say so if I do icons with frames this is what happens see what happened there and then I go icons only you can choose that so this is just something that I did because I just really like the way uh, the it looks without the icons now the other thing to look at is fonts now as you get a bigger phone you think that the fonts are going to be easier to read because the phone is bigger well that is not always the case uh, what ends up having higher resolution screens could create smaller fonts. So what you could do here is under the font area is you can change the size of the font and it's going to tell you how large it looks. So you can look at either you know making it super large or a medium whatever makes sense for you so that you can um, experience the best uh, viewing experience with your phone. You also have the ability to change some of the fonts if you'd like to do so. 
Now while we're in this area, another new feature is the blue light feature. And the blue light feature is a great option, especially for you who do night reading. If you've ever taken your phone and turned it on and you felt like your eyes hurt uh, because of the brightness, um, what blue light will do is it will eliminate that for you. It's going to make it softer and easier to read. So I'm going to turn it on, and I don't know if you can see that on, on video. We'll turn it off. And then we'll turn it on again. It kind of changes the way the screen looks. It makes it softer. And for someone at first, you may think, wow, it doesn't look like true white anymore. Well, it's uh, since it's eliminating all that blue light, it is um, changing the way you look at it. And what you could do is you can actually modify when you turn this on. You can determine the opacity. You can determine when it will happen. So you can say it on schedule. Um, so I can say that I want it to start at 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. because uh, I'll be um, at some point going to bed and I want to have my phone um, not as bright uh, or the white to be as bright. I want all that blue light. So you notice right here it says that using blue light filters will help you sleep better. So this is something that you can enable but you could do it with a schedule or not or you can let the phone take care of it automatically. So when you turn it on it'll just set it to that feature until um, you modify that. Now another area that's pretty cool in the uh, in the display area is going to be your always on display. And in this area you can do some customization. First of all you can turn it off if you don't like it. I, knew, I do know people that like it off. But what you could also do is if you go into the layouts you can change the way things look. So by default it's going to look like this. I kind of like this big setting here. Uh, and there's a lot of different settings that you can choose if it's something you want to look at. And when you do it, you do have the ability to change the color of certain things. So you can change the color of that large number five uh, to whatever you'd like just so to make sure that something stands out or you can turn that off. You could also put in a background if you'd like here. But a lot of flexibility. You also have the ability to turn off notifications if that's what you like to do. And then you could also uh, switch from the clock to the calendar to the image if you just would like something else in its place. Now this is a feature that I uh, really like uh, and I think uh, not only will men like this but ladies will like this as well because uh, if you've ever put your phone in your pocket or you put your phone in your purse and then find that your phone accidentally was on um, and it warms up and it eats up your battery, this is a cool feature. Keep screen turned off. Uh, it says prevent the screen from turning on accidentally while the device is in a dark place such as a purse or pocket or in this case you know pocket or bag so this is um, a great feature that I would recommend you turn on especially if you had that experience where your phone starts warming up in your pocket and you just don't know why and that's because it just turned on by mistake now this next tip is going to be in the mobile hotspot area and the mobile hotspot uh, operate just like any hotspot on two uh, bands 2.4 or 5 gigahertz well 2.4 is what your home phone uses the wireless phone most networks and very few people use a 5 uh, gigahertz span so what you could do is you can actually enable your phone to prefer 5 gigahertz and what that's gonna do is if you're using your phone as a hotspot your phone will perform actually better because it's not competing with all the other phones that are on the same band or networks that are in the area so let me show you how you change that so when you go to configure your hotspot um, and you go into advanced options, you're able to then see here at the very bottom, if you can see here, use 5 gigahertz band when available. This is going to make your performance uh, of your hotspot much better. It's going to be faster. It's going to be more uh, it's snappier because it's not going to be competing with the 2.4 band. So I always recommend that you enable that. Now another tip, uh, especially for those of you who may not have unlimited data, is to really understand the data usage area. And in the data usage area, uh, you can see which applications are eating up all of your data. Uh, and then also you can uh, manage those uh, by setting limits. So you can, if you set a mobile limit, you'll notice right here I have mine set up where I'll have a 2 gig. Uh, and once I hit 2 gig, it's going to send a warning. You can modify this and set it up so that it will have a data limit, it will not allow you to go over it, and it will notify you as well. So uh, it's a nice feature to use if it's something that you'd like to configure. You just need to make sure that you have the right period down for your phone based on your current billing cycle. Now another feature that I find um, really um, good about when you're using your phone is um, a feature that's called Do Not Disturb. Uh, it's not a new feature, but it's one that uh, very few people use. And uh, when you use Do Not Disturb, what we will do is it will stop incoming phone calls, your phone from vibrating from text messages at a specific time. 
and you also can set um, a start time and an end time but then you can allow exceptions so let's say for example you could be on a call or you're always on a call by your employer or you want to allow your your mother your brother your sister all right your children to be able to bypass this exception you can actually choose them by choosing allow exception and then choosing their contact points but this will uh, silence your phone from many Facebook notifications Instagram notifications all notifications at this specific time on, and phone calls as well unless uh, you make it an exception now under accessibility there's some um, cool features that um, even if you're not visually impaired or hearing impaired or dexterity impaired you can um, leverage them so let's go into vision just to show you one we talked about the power savings mode but one of the things that you could do is turn things into grayscale and when you turn things into grayscale you're going to be using less power now uh, that's an option if you want to be able to save um, battery life uh, you do have under hearing um, you do have the ability to get flash notifications so uh, the camera light will flash when you're receiving a notification right and that's something that's also beneficial um, I even see a lot of people uh, that are uh, going out at night and they're at a club and they're sh they know that they're not going to be able to hear their phone they have their phone vibrating but they also have um, that as well now there's also some sound indicators and you can enable these uh, for if there's a baby crying or doorbell for it to notify you as well um, and then receive alerts so again a lot of flexibility and this is not just for those who need it because of any kind of impediment but it's also something that you can leverage now under lock screen and security there's um, there are a lot of features that you can um, leverage uh, first of all you do have how you can lock your screen uh, right now I have it set to pin and fingerprints but you'll notice down here you can use your eyes to unlock your phone so what we're going to do is we're going to go through and I'm just going to show you how this works it's pretty straightforward and easy and then also how to register fingerprints uh, fingerprints uh, work really well as long as you take the time to register your finger correctly and it's almost instantaneous it all takes some practice just understanding how to register though now when you are working with fingerprints you have a couple options um, you can have um, multiple fingerprints um, in the system and what I always recommend you do is so that you know when one is not working uh, which one would you delete and which one you would re-register is to rename them or once you create them to give them a name so this is uh, the one I just did was my right thumb um, as I started using the phone so I'm gonna rename that one um, I'm gonna add another thumb and one of the things about when you're working adding your thumb you gotta think about you're not always gonna have your finger placed in the exact spot uh, so as you start using this start making mistakes you know it's okay if you see that little red symbol come up every now and then um, you know change the position of your of your thumb on the phone because and even if you want yeah put it upside down and keep on rotating it so that you have every possible impression so like if I hold my phone here and I may get this part of my finger or this part of my finger um, I'll just do that so I wanted to get as many samples as it can so now it has everything now that I've done it I'm gonna say I'm gonna rename it and I'm gonna call this my left thumb and then this just helps me understand if I have a problem with a finger not always unlocking the phone which finger it is so I'll do um, this uh, finger my index now and again notice how I'm I'm just rotating and I'm gonna try to get the top this whole area of my of my finger I'm gonna you know do it upside down as well because you know whoever who knows so it's not just a flat imprint and you'll continue to do this every single time until you get um, every possible angle of your finger now once you've registered your fingers as I have so I have three of them already registered and you can do them you know one for each hand if you'd like um, you can determine if you'd like to um, use your fingerprint for web sign on for um, verifying Sam your Samsung account or using with Samsung pay which is something I have and I highly recommend you guys um, leverage Samsung pay I do have um, some videos on the channel on Samsung pay I may do something now with this one because there's been some updates over the last couple uh, months so I'll probably do a brand new Samsung pay uh, video but you can see the one that I have on the channel uh, for more information for now but that's everything about fingerprints and you can even use the fingerprints to sign on to websites if you use the Samsung browser I don't I use Chrome or another one and I tend not to use this feature but I definitely use it with Samsung pay and I also use it to lock and unlock my phone now another feature I want to talk about before we go into irises is the uh, find my mobile and find my mobile is an application that is 
connected to your Samsung account that's going to allow you to find your phone in the event that you lose it. Uh, you should register with Samsung and go through that process so that uh, you can enable your phone to be found in the event that you lose it. There's security features there where you can remote wipe it, where you can locate it, you can put messages on your phone. So I definitely recommend that you look at that. Now another area that is really neat is a secure folder. Now secure folder uh, is going to give you the ability to protect content uh, from being accessed and also applications from being accessed. Um, I'm going to do a video um, on secure folders uh, that's going to show you, you know, all the different things that you can do. But for now, let's do a brief summary of it. Now, when you start setting up your secure folder, it's going to ask you, um, how are you going to unlock the secure folder? Um, I chose my thumb. You could choose your iris once you have that set up. But then what you have to do is put up a, backward pa a backup password in the event that you, f you just can't unlock it so you don't lose your information. Keep in mind that once you go into the secure folder, it is secure. Um, any data you put in there, any applications cannot be accessed unless you remember your password. Um, or you can use your finger or whatever other form of um, authentication that you've selected. Now once you set that up, it's going to go through creating the secure folder and it's telling you the things that you can do. You can move content um, into that folder uh, and you know your shortcut was now created and added to the screen. So now I've established at least the foundation for what my secure folder is going to be. And here's some examples of things that you can have. You can take, if you're in a secure folder, and what I like about this setup is you can actually choose camera and it will take a picture and then that picture that's been taken in the secure folder will then take automatically any pictures and put them securely somewhere else where no one else can see them. Uh, if you hit, hit the gallery button with that little security thing on it, it's going to show you only those secure images that are in there because they're accessed from the secure folder. You can have secure contacts, you can have secure email, pretty much a lot of secure things, even secure music, things that um, you want to protect, files, notes, um, and even uh, maps. So a lot of flexibility to the things that you can secure. Now there's some features that I would recommend that you enable when using the secure folder. If you go here and you choose settings, uh, one thing that you want to do because it is secure, you want to auto lock when the screen gets turned off. You don't want to leave it on because if someone else picks up your phone, uh, they can access it. So you don't want to have that timeout or anything like that. You do have some other features here, right? Um, but I wouldn't recommend against those because if you're going to have those timeout features, then you don't need to have a secure folder. Now, you do have uh, notifications here in display. You can either choose to show content or not. And you notice that um, here are some um, really interesting things that you can choose from. Uh, you also then also have, you know, you can hide the folder itself. So on the desktop of your phone, there's going to be a folder. You can choose to have it hidden, and then you can access your secure content uh, through uh, your toggles at the very top if that's what you'd like. Uh, accounts, again, uh, keyboard and input methods, there's all these different things that you can play with that are going to give you a more secure experience. Now let's take a look at the irises. So we've looked at several features there that I thought would be important for you to, to leverage. And now let's look at the iris feature. Now what it's going to ask for is the current pin that you're using to lock your phone. Um, that's the backup. Even if you're using your thumb, it does have to have a pin when you set it up. So I'm going to go ahead and put in my pin so that I can access this feature. All right, so now that we've um, entered our pin, the next thing is we're going to want to make sure that we don't have glasses on. Um, if you do have contacts, it says it has a problem with it. I wear glasses, so I'm going to try them with and without. Uh, but you're going to hold your phone um, at least 14 inches from your face um, when you do this. So you're not going to bring your phone all the way up to your face to do this. You want to hold it normally because that's how you'll use it. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and set this up. Now, once you hit continue, watch the illustration that's going to come up. I'm going to tell you, take off your glasses and you're going to bring your phone to your face or up to eye level and then it's going to register. So what it will do now is it's going to go to the position where it's looking to see my face. So I'm going to go ahead and do that registration. Now once you've completed your registration process, it's going to give you some tips of things to make sure that you're doing. Um, again, making sure you hold up the, the device, making sure that you're not wearing contacts or glasses, uh, making sure that your eyes are fully open and that you're um, avoiding direct sunlight because the sunlight hitting the sensor is going to make it very difficult for the sensor to recognize you. And uh, making sure that you keep this area clean, which I know could be a challenge, especially um, uh, for the ladies that wear makeup, um, it could be something, or if you have a lot of facial oils that get on your phone, uh, that's going to impair um, how well the camera is going to respond to your irises. Now, once you've set that up, you can actually um, enable the, the feature of uh, using the iris to unlock. So I'm going to turn this on, and now it's on. 
Uh, a couple things that you can do is you can also uh, change your your preview mask so you know when it's doing the uh, recognition you can have where it just does this if you want something fun you can have these other things um, I'm gonna use uh, something that's a little bit more sci-fi because I like the sci-fi stuff so I'm gonna choose that and the next time that it comes up on login it's gonna automatically come up with those little Borg like um, uh, tags to have me look into that area uh, for so it recognizes my uh, irises. I will tell you by experience it is very fast and it works really well. Now here's another neat feature that I use a lot um, and it's very convenient um, and we're gonna go into the lock screen and we're gonna go into the secure lock settings and then we're gonna choose smart lock. Now it's gonna ask me to input my pin and uh, once I input my pin I'll show you what it does and why it's so important to know about it. Now the smart lock feature is a great solution. There's a couple things you can do. You can keep your phone unlocked when it's on your body. You can keep your phone unlocked when it's a trusted place. You could uh, have a trusted voice, right? So based on, on, on your voice, it will stay unlocked. Or you could have a trusted device. Uh, while these other ones are really cool, the one that I use the most is trusted device. And the neat thing about trusted device is that if you're connected to a trusted Bluetooth device, the phone will remain unlocked. And that means that if you're driving your car and your phone is connected to the car via Bluetooth, it will not lock. That means that if you're connected uh, to a headset, like you're on a run, and you are uh, and you have it as a trusted device, it will not get locked. Um, this just makes it a lot easier to access the phone when you're with some of these trusted devices. So when you go into trusted devices, you'll see it here automatically. And as you're setting up a new Bluetooth device, it's going to... Um, ask you do you want to add it to trusted devices for those devices like your car your headphones I would choose to have it as a trusted device that way you don't have to worry about having the phone locked keep in mind that that doesn't mean that your secure folder is going to be accessible it just means that the phone will be unlocked now this portion of the video is going to be more about common um, I would say Android tips and usage uh, tips when using uh, the Samsung Note 7. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how do you configure this screen. So I'm going to go ahead and press right here on a blank area and there's a couple things you can do. Uh, first of all, you have this area that's called briefing. You can turn this on or you can turn this off. I turn it off. Uh, this is uh, Flipboard and if you're swiping it basically um, comes up anytime you swipe. By pressing that button you're going to be able to turn it off. The other thing that you could do is modify your grid size. So you could go from a uh, 4x5 to a 5x5 so you get more space to a 4x4 so you get less space but the icons are bigger or a 4x5 as I have here. So this is going to give you the ability to create some flexibility uh, around your screen. Now the other option that you have is for widgets. Um, and widgets are all these little shortcuts that you see here. So if I choose a widget, um, you have lots of them. You could choose whichever one is important to you. And one that I like using, and um, it was something that I by accident discovered, is this map widget. Some of us use our phone as a GPS solution and as a GPS solution only. Uh, so if you choose Google Maps, it's going to open up Google Maps like you're looking for an address. But if you choose um, navigation it's going to work like one of those Garmin GPS's or any other. Now another widget uh, that I highly recommend and I use quite often is this one right here. Uh, you can turn on a magnification function and I'm gonna put it right here on my desktop. I already have one here uh, but just to show you how it works. Uh, it really um, a lot of people use their phones as magnifying glasses to be able to read uh, small print and what you could do with your phone is the very same thing instead of using your camera there is a magnifier app. This app eliminates all of the functionality uh, for the most part that you have in the camera and then just focuses on magnifying content so that you can see it. So this is a cool app to use or with that's built into your Samsung Galaxy Note 7. Now another thing that you could do is really configure everything that's going on on your screen um, to whatever you like. So first of all we dropped this um, this shortcut or widget here and we're gonna drag it up on the top to remove it and now it's gone. Uh, but what you could do is you could actually group things together as well. You'll notice that I have these groups here and these groups can exist here or anywhere and simply put all you have to do is you just press your finger on the uh, icon and then you drag it on top of another icon and then you'll have a folder. You can name the folder, you could change the color um, of it, um, you could tap add and it's gonna list 
all of the programs that you have in your app drawer uh, to add in there. And now you can see how I have a folder based on that cut color. Now what I could also do is I can remove something out of it. So if I move it out, what ends up happening is that folder disappears. So that's an easy way to be able to enable uh, or create folders and remove them. Keep in mind that all these areas here, like I can take this folder, I could put it in this area, and it's going to also exist on the bottom, or I can press and hold and drag it back. Now another thing I wanted to show you is has to do with toggles. So when you bring your finger down once, you'll notice that you have some some buttons here. Let's make sure you can see that nice and clear. Uh, so you have these things that are called toggles. If you bring your finger down one more time, you're going to be able to see um, all of them um, listed there. Now, one of the things that you could do is if you use two fingers, you're going to bring them down all at once. So using your two fingers, they're all going to come down. Now, the other thing that you'll notice here is in the previous versions of Samsung's implementation of their toggles, all you had to do is press the uh, the specific icon and then you if you press and held it it would take you into a specific area notice now that there's these little um, down arrows um, or carrots there that allow you to go into a separate section so you no longer press and hold you click on that pull down and then it's going to show you additional options uh, that are available for that specific item now the other thing you can do is you can rearrange this and you rearrange this just by pressing and holding and now what you could do is you notice there's some that are not there but all you have to do is grab it and drag it wherever you want it to go and you can modify the order so for example for me the most important thing is Wi-Fi the flashlight function which is going to turn on your flashlight I'm going to show you something about the flashlight in a second Bluetooth and airplane mode but you can reorder this to see the you know the the two rows that you want of most important icons or the first row as you saw when you pull this down so uh, really neat way to reorganize and then all you have to do is hit done now looking at the flashlight function, it's been updated. And um, you normally won't see what else is uh, available just by hitting the flashlight, but you can see how the light is on. Uh, but if you click on that uh, bottom area, the pull down, now the flashlight has up to five levels of intensity, which makes it like crazy bright. So you have a level one, level two, and then if, as I drag it over, it becomes a level five. So this is what a level five looks like. And let me see if it will show on camera. Um, it's kind of in the back there, the glow. Uh, but you can bring it down to a level four and then continue to bring it down um, all the way up to a level one. So it by default is on level five. So I thought that's pretty cool that now you can change the intensity of your flashlight. Now your app drawer um, also can have uh, folders or things organized alphabetically. If you go to this little dot area, you could do A to Z and it's going to organize all your applications alphabetically. Uh, what you can also do is by going into this area is you can edit and by editing you can easily remove applications so I can do an uninstall of any of these apps. What more important I find is if I go into for example this AT&T and I open this folder I can disable applications that AT&T uh, chose to install for me that I don't want to see. So I can click on any of these and remove them the ones that have the minus sign or I can find um, any of uh, those that are listed here here. I did a lot of that so you cannot uninstall it but at least you could disable things so for example here's that AT&T DirecTV remote I don't use it so I'm gonna hit a minus and it's gonna say disable and what you do by disabling it it will never get updated and it will just be hidden it's still gonna take up some space on your phone but it's completely gone now the other thing you can do is you can create folders so just as we did earlier I can drag something on top of it to create a folder or what I can do is I can put it on top of a folder the same rules apply uh, that we were looking at earlier where as you're dragging things around it's going to either create a folder remove a folder or what you can do is hit the minus like I'm doing here for this family stuff um, disabling it so it goes away or you can install any of your apps now text messaging there's also some cool things now this does not apply to all carriers Verizon for example tends to use their own um, messaging app which I wish they didn't because there's some really cool functionality here so you can actually change the size of the font of your um, text messages and then the other thing you can do and this is one of my favorite things about this is if you go into the uh, sandwich up here you could actually schedule a text message so let's say for example you are 
uh, want to remind your child to do something uh, once they get out of school, or you want to send a reminder to yourself, or you want, or you're in a different time zone traveling, like I uh, end up being, and you want to be able to, in local time, send a text message um, while they're sleeping or you're sleeping. What you could do is you can actually schedule text message. Now, AT&T has this. Um, if you're a T-Mobile user, let me know if that function is available within the Samsung phone. Uh, but right now, if you're AT&T, you can definitely schedule your text messages. Now, uh, this feature right here is going to show you um, how to share lots of photos at once. Now, some of you have used that tap function where you tap both phone, phones together and it shares. But let's say you want to share 15 photos. It becomes a pain to select them all and it takes too much time. So I'm going to show you something called the Wi-Fi Direct. Uh, what you do is you tap on the screen and you choose Share. And one of the options we're going to choose is Wi-Fi Direct. Now you notice once you swipe across, you'll see that there's an option here that's called Wi-Fi Direct, so I'm going to choose it. And then once I choose it, it's going to start looking for Samsung devices that are available on my network that I can use. And in this case, I have a phone here, so I'm going to choose um, this Android phone. And what it will do is it will prompt me on this side that it's sharing, and the file just comes across. This is the fastest, fastest way to share files. It's, I'm telling you, it's incredibly fast, and too few people know about it. So check out this feature if you're going to be moving files back and forth. Now, a cool feature that you have with your Samsung phone is the fact that when you're taking a picture, if you want to take a selfie, all you have to do is swipe up, and the camera will flip, and it will take it to the front. So you don't have to uh, switch cameras anymore manually. All you do is swipe up. Uh, with your finger right here on the screen and it will switch to uh, selfie mode automatically. Now one thing that drove me crazy about the uh, Samsung phones is uh, that black and white photos kind of disappeared. Uh, so a couple things that you can do when you're doing the camera. If you swipe over this way you'll notice that you have um, all these features here. Um, I don't really use the pro features but if you're someone who wants to get into that you can play with that where you can adjust everything about your phone. A couple that I really like and enjoy is the selective focus. So the background will be blurred but the front will be in focus or vice versa. You have collaging capability. Um, a lot of things that I would say just, just experiment with it. But the one thing that uh, I'm sure a lot of people do is use your your camera to take um, like black and white photos. And what you'll find is that there's no black and white or grayscale photo um, capability anymore. So what I've done is um, I've actually downloaded, and I'm going to show you how you download this thing that's called memory. So memory to me is the closest uh, to grayscale that you can find. And if we go back to it, there's some other ones that are right here that you may think, but you know, notice that's in color. You do have um, some vignette stuff that you can do. But if you want to download more filters, you swipe down, you choose download, and in the download area, you're going to find a lot of these filters. And what I did is I downloaded one that was uh, in here. I think it's under uh, candy. Uh, let's see if it's a candy camera or it's on the UCAM. Let's see. Yeah, it's the UCAM. This one that's called um, Memory Filter, you can actually um, dim this down so that it's pure grayscale. And that's one of the only ways I can think of that you can get grayscale. There's other filters that you can play with, but I think this is uh, the best one in my opinion. Now, once you've downloaded filters, you may want to rearrange things. Like, so for example, since I like the Memory Filter um, more, what I can do and you know you don't want to swipe up and swipe down all the time I'll press and hold and then drag it upwards because this is going to be you know one of my go-to filters so I either have no effect or I have my memory filter those are the two and again you have grainy film kind of views and all these other ones um, if you do install a filter that you don't like you'll notice that when you are moving things around you also have the ability to hit the minus sign that's going to uninstall any filter that you've downloaded now one of the things I wanted to show you, and again that's that flip that we were talking about, for, so going from front facing or from back facing uh, to front facing, what you could do is also now is take on um, a flash. Um, a lot of folks don't know about this feature either. What this would do is this will allow your camera screen, or actually your screen, to flash white bright white before you take a picture. So if you're out in a club or you're in a, a low lit area um, inside of a conference room or wherever you are and you want to take a selfie, uh, just enable the flash right there either to automatic or manual meaning on like I have it there and the screen will just blast white before it takes the picture giving you a better uh, selfie photo. Now one other neat feature that you have with the uh, with the note is the ability to multitask. That is to have two 
screens or two applications up at the same time. If you press and hold uh, this button right here, um, you're going to get into a multitasking option. So notice how the uh, text message portion took half of the screen. And now when I choose uh, Chrome, it appears here at the very bottom. So you can actually do two things at the same time. Uh, you can it could be YouTube here in the bottom and you can be texting on the top or you can uh, move them to the bottom as well there's all these controls here when you tap on this dot that allows you to switch things so you can have one on the top and one on the bottom you also have the ability to copy information between the apps I have a lot of videos on multitasking that you can check out but this gives you um, some really neat functionality because you have such a large screen so this concludes our tips and tricks for the Note 7. I'm going to have a dedicated video on uh, edge kind of capabilities as well as the stylus. But those are all the things that I would consider are neat and new uh, or things that I would do on my phone to just get the best experience. If you like this video, please give this a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.